Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Bring Your Family Back to the Table series. I'll be your host, Anna Romano. The purpose of this series is to show you how to meet some of the daily challenges of creating healthy meals and connecting with family. Today, uh, we have the great opportunity of sitting down with celebrity chef Fabio Viviani. Welcome, Fabio, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So my husband and I just moved to Moore Park about seven months ago, and I had no idea that you had a restaurant here. Yes, and yes. Where do you guys live in? What, in what area of Moore Park do you guys live? We're like off of Hitch. Oh, very nice. I used to live right up on uh, on Peach Hill. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Right around the corner. Very yeah. good. It's a beautiful area. A lot of families there, very residential. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of going on, so you guys are going to get some peaceful and quiet. That's but exactly the, right. The there. That was my very first restaurant there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just really nice to have it 10 minutes from home. And uh, yeah. I signed up for your cooking class, so I get to meet you in person next month. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. So I wanted to spend some time talking about getting family meals on the table in 30 minutes yes. and focusing on some of your tips in your lovely book, 30 Minute Italian, um, which I'm, I'm enjoying very much. So um, your great grandma had a big influence on your life growing up in Italy. Tell us about that. Well, uh, you know, I was stuck at home with my grandma. You know, my mom and my dad, they work every day, two, three jobs, just to provide some meals. And uh, I was at home with grandma. So she was doing nothing but cooking because she was wheelchair bound. So mm -hmm. she couldn't really go outside of the house anywhere. And, uh, and so she was cooking all day. And then in order to keep me busy and keep me quiet, she was having me stand in between her legs on a wheelchair, and I was kind of her reach and her arm in the in the kitchen. Uh -huh. So I found myself, you know, making pasta and baking pies and and do all these things at a very early age. Mm -hmm. So tell us why eating family dinners together is so important to build lifelong bonds. You know, what grows together stays together, right? If you if you, I think that it's important for family. To, to get away from the everyday distraction, you know, the internet, the TV, the news, the newspaper, your friends. Your, it's, it's good for family to get together and spend at least an hour or an hour and a half. You don't have to do it for, you know, six hours, like some Italian dinners or lunches are. But it's good to reconnect with the people closer to you. And, and I think the food, it's, it's a social lubricant, bring everything together. So I think that's the best opportunity other than, Sit, let's sit down on a couch and let's talk. That's in modern time, this is a little weird. But I think that when you grab a meal or when you have a lunch or a dinner, you want to talk to your people. You want to know how your wife is doing, how your kids are doing. You want to, and, and so a lot easier in front of a good meal and a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Many would say that cooking just takes too much time. Is this a myth? It is a myth. Uh, some dishes takes a very long time, but generally i mean i can put a meal on the table for four people in 20 minutes and we're talking about a couple of courses you know as long as your kitchen's smart as long as you're organized and you know what to do mm -hmm. it takes a very little you know if i had to fix my car by myself it would take me a week because i don't know where to look i don't know what to touch i don't know what to screw and yeah. build and and what wires put where so i can't fix my car but if I take it to my mechanics, sometimes it takes 20 minutes and the car is fun because they know what to do. So when I published Fabio's 30 Minutes Italian, I was literally trying to teach people how to be smart in the kitchen and show them that there is a hundreds of meal that you can do from the moment that you look at the ingredients to the moment that you start to, to fork it the first time to mm -hmm. eat it in less than 30 minutes. Well, most of the dishes in the book are really 10, 15, 20 minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. Now... If you want to cook a 20-pound turkey or a pot roast, it takes a little longer, but that's common sense. Yeah. But, then, you know, I, I, you don't need a lot of time to do a great food. Mm -hmm. And as you do it more, you become more confident, as you say. Yeah, it's normal, you know. It's like, I don't know, I've tried to fold the laundry lately. My wife used to do it for me, and now I said, you know, I want to help her out because I'm spending more time at home. So I said, all right, let me fold the laundry. First time for the freaking basket of laundry, it took me an hour and a half. She does it in five minutes. I'm not, I'm not even going to know where to look for it. But it's repetition. Repetition makes permanent. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and and that's what you got to do. You got to do something. Start with little things. Start with something very simple. Mm-hmm. Come, make it dip. Make hummus. Make something that you don't even have to touch it. Use a food processor. Use whatever. Just make something to begin with. Mm-hmm. And, and that will build your confidence and your competence. Yeah. And when you're confident and competent, you can achieve a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of it's a matter of practice, guys, mm-hmm. for real. You say in your book that Italians are known to spend a long time at the table, but not a long time in the kitchen. And we're always eating, but not always cooking. Can you give us some strategies on how to save time in the kitchen? Well, you know, batch cooking, for example. I love, I love to make mm-hmm. sauces and dressing. Why would you make only what you're eating? If you make a great tomato sauce or a, or a ragu or a meat sauce, if you make some some anything, just make a bigger batch. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if making two, three order of, of tomato sauce for your current dinner plan takes 10 minutes, to make three times that much will take 12 minutes, which the only difference is that next time you don't have to do it, you have it that ready. One thing that is very well organized is my pantry. You know, I have jar, I have everything measured, I have everything I need because I know what I'm going to need it, when I'm going to need it, and when I'm going to need it is ready. You know, I, I have uh, soups in, in, in deli cups. I have, uh, I do a lot of chopped, for example, onion. I chopped, you know, every time I, I go to the grocery store, I buy 10, 15 onion. I slice them in half, I chop them, and I put them in a chop in a Ziploc bag frozen. Mm. So next time I need chopped onion, all I have to do is to go in my freezer, open my Ziploc, get a cup measure, put as much frozen onion as I need, and the difference between a fresh onion and a frozen onion is they only take 30 seconds longer on the stove to defrost and start cooking. 30 seconds. And you save all the time. Now, I do that with carrots. I do that with celery. I do that with peppers. You do it once, and then you don't have to do it for a whole month. Same things with meatball. You make meatball. How many meatball you make? You make three meatball, you make 20. If you make 20, then you can save them and have them for next time. All you have to do is to reheat them. People don't think, people can think over the weekend. I, I, it's hard to teach them how to think a month ahead. But, but that's how you do it. Great ideas. Yeah. What about some tips on organizing your kitchen as well as essential tools or gadgets to make life well, easier? Well, think about it. Everybody in your kitchen, you have crap you don't need. Mm. Period. I don't mm. care who you are. You have a bunch of shit you don't need. So what you need to do, you need to audit your drawer and your pantry's cabinet. Open it and put on front, in front, right in front of your nose, the things that you use more often. It's crazy how people have a drawer full with 30 spoon, 44, 50 measuring things, and they always go back to the same one. Right. Then pick that one and pick another one. Pick plan A and plan B. Put them in the drawer. Take everything all the crap out, put them in a box in your garage or in your socket or in your basement and only use those when the one that you use every day, they break because they will break eventually. Not if they're metal, they won't. I have some metal spoon, they're 30 years old, but you know, wooden spoon, it breaks once in a while. Then why do you have all this crap in your pantry and why do you have all these little counter appliances that you never use, but they're there deterring you from getting motivated to do anything with it. Mm. Create a neatness and, and cleanliness motivation because it's easier to see and use one thing when you have only one thing to use. Mm-hmm. You know? What are some of your favorites as far as appliances? I know you love the food processor. I love food processor. I love Robocoop. Um, mm-hmm. I love it. I love a good KitchenAid, um, the pasta roller, and the, and the stand-up mixer, I love it. I use it every day. Um, I love Vitamix. I mean, think about how crazy it is. Yeah. I can make vegetable soup. I can make soup in the Vitamix without even touching the stove. So I can get literally peppers, chicken broth, and a little touch of cream and, and everything. And turn on the Vitamix, put the lid on it, let it go for five minutes or, or six or seven, the power of the Vitamix is so strong that will heat up the soup to a boiling point. If you let it sit there for six, seven, eight, ten minutes, and there is nothing to do, you gotta put ingredients together, put the broth, turn it on, and walk away. That's my kind of cooking. Mm-hmm. And you have a beautiful soup 
or you have a cream of potato, or you have chicken noodle, or whatever it is, it's there, you don't have to do it. Because mm. the Vitamix goes from cold liquid and ingredient to perfectly hot, steaming hot soup puree. I mean, I do all my kids' food with it, and it's a, just great. It's a great mm. appliance. I usually cook my soups first, and then I put them in the Vitamix. I've never tried it that way. So if you have a Vitamix, especially yeah. the latest gender fiction one, mm -hmm. they're very powerful. So what you do, what you could do, if you know, like I do, for example, I, do, I love to do cream of potato. It's one of my favorite soup of all time. Mm -hmm. So what you do, you, you dice the potato, you put them raw in the Vitamix, then you turn, you put some chicken broth or vegetable broth, you put a, a little good tablespoon of butter, salt, pepper, a little powder, garlic, and you turn it on. Mm. At the beginning, it looks all chunky, but then when you put it on high speed, then you put the lid on it. You know the, the classic noise. Mm -hmm. You let it sit for five, six, seven minutes. The soup will start to get really hot, really? and it gets hot to the point that it gets to a, almost a boiling point. Wow! And the soup in, in in ten minutes, you have a perfect smooth potato cream in no time. And now you put it on a plate, a little drizzle of olive oil, some Parmesan cheese. It's game changer. That's awesome. What are some of your old reliables that you make over and over? Fresh pasta. I can make fresh pasta with my eyes uh, behind my head. No, I mean, I make fresh pasta in less than 90 seconds with a food processor. You put eggs, flour, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and a food processor with blade attachment. You mm -hmm. press the pulse button 20, 30 times, and you have fresh pasta. And then with a with a with a kitchen aid, yeah, you roll it in no time. Literally, by the time that my wife heat up tomato sauce, I have fresh fettuccine made on the spot. Mm. How often do you get back to Italy, Fabio? At least twice a year for about a month. Mm. Every summer I go for two three weeks, and then I go for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Is it true that you hate cilantro? I hate cilantro. <laughs> I, I hate cilantro, and it's not like I dislike it. For example, I'm not a fan of peanuts. Yeah. You know, but if I have, you know, coconut lime soup, there is peanuts. If I have uh, general tzao chicken, yeah, there is peanuts. Um, you know, I'm not going to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but if I was surviving on it, I would eat it. You see what I mean? I'm not going to look for it. When I'm on a plane, I don't get peanuts while I travel because I don't like I just don't like it. But they don't bother me if there is some peanuts around in my food. Cilantro, it ruins everything. <laughs> I hate cilantro. I, I dislike cilantro. I think that it, people are saying that some people have a gene in their taste bud that makes cilantro taste like soap. That's why people don't like it. I have no problem with soap. I take two showers a day. Soap goes in my mouth all the time. Crap. Cilantro tastes like crap. And crap is what I have a problem with. Oh, boy. Um, well, hey, this has been such a, a pleasure and so much fun speaking with you. Is there anything else you'd like to um, add today to our conversation? No, I mean, I thank, you, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You know, if you guys want to see me in action... Uh, and mm -hmm. check out some good recipe, simple stuff that you literally can do in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most, mm -hmm. you should go on YouTube mm -hmm. and type Fabio's Kitchen. It's my online cookie show. Every week I have new recipes, and every week I teach you how to make a 5, 10, 15 minutes dish without a headache. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate it if you guys go watch that. Okay, well, thank you. And we could also find Fabio at FabioViviani.com. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Take care. You Thank too. you so much. Bye-bye.